Such exciting plans and prospects for this live safari. My name is Scott, if you are joining for the first time, and I'm teamed up with VM on camera. Now, the reason why I've wanted to stop the vehicle is we're searching for mating leopard that Jamie found yesterday. Brent took over the sighting because he was in a more maneuverable vehicle, this one. And they had an incredible, incredible afternoon watching Tingana and Tandy, these two leopards mating. Now, we also went out late last night. They were in the same place mating until about 10 o'clock. So I'm hoping they haven't gone too far, but they definitely would have moved. Now, sorry, I just thought I heard something there. Now, the great thing about mating leopard is that they are very vocal. Each time they copulate, there's a lot of growling and hissing and snarling, and that's why it's quite useful to stop and listen when trying to look for them. The plan is what I've done, and let me show you on the map quickly, is I've actually, we've tried to forecast where Tingana has moved. Now, Tingana is the male leopard, and he is the one that the female will be following. So, last night, they were basically over here where I've just put the crosshairs. So I'm just going to zoom out quickly. Kind of in the center of Juma, but in the southern portions there are. Uh, we're moving west now, and I'm thinking Tangana is going to move, have moved back in a westerly trajectory towards Arethusa, which is the kind of core of his territory. And hopefully Tandy would have followed him, which he definitely would have. Brent's just trying to get a hold of me to obviously work out where I'm going. Morning, Brent. Um, I'm checking Weaver's Nest onto Elephant Carcass to the last position to try and find some tracks. As you can see, it's a beautiful morning. There's just a few clouds. Copy, thanks. Um, and it's about 22 degrees China. Celsius, 71. Oh, shh, listen. Listen now. may very faintly be able to hear, ooh, ooh, some lions calling. Sadly, it sounds like they are south of our southern boundary. But there is a chance that we may pop into them. So, we'll bump into them. Lions calling, leopards could well be on the property. Brent's heading out as well. He's gonna be doing a combination of driving and a bushwalk. I'm not sure if my comms are working. Um, problems with them, but they do seem to be okay. <laughs> well, Diane, you've made a little play on words, and you've said it may be Catterday, not Saturday. Yeah, Juman, I hope you're right, Diane. I hope you are right. And for those of you who are wondering how Diane's communicating with us, well, it's very, very simple. All you do is hashtag Safari Live on Twitter uh, or send an email through to questions at wildearth.tv. And that way you stand a chance of your question being answered. Apologies in advance if I don't get to the question, but there's lots of people sending through questions. And not only questions, questions, how are you doing? And card is calling that you would have heard. I literally switched. We're active as we drove past that knobthorn tree. And I wonder what it was that got them in the mood to start singing for us. So it's tricky to see tracks now. That's why I'm driving. I'm told there's a little sh at the moment, so, uh, um, so apologies for that. Just making sure I can't see any sign of these leopards moving down there. Nothing clear. Thanks. 
given us some updates on probably the same line that we took now. Um, um, I heard from around 430 off the Jupiter camera. So that's really useful. So thank you very much. And hopefully we're going to be able to track where they are and where they are. Really exciting that Tundi was seen for the first time in over of being taking safaris, these live safaris here at Juma. So a new leopard to add to the list, which is always exciting stuff. And it's so interesting the way these female leopards will come onto Juma in search of males. It's not the first time we've seen a strange lady appear following the dominant males that we get to see either in Vula or Tingana. I think going forward it's just going to be Ghana that we see mating. And Vula doesn't appear to be in the best shape and is dwindling quite quickly. So I think Tingana is the boss now. And when females need to mate, they'll move far out of their territory in order to find the males that they need to mate with. see me I'm not too sure again apologies for the shaking signal but that is what happens on a live safari there's a few glitches along the way and it will all be worthwhile once we hopefully find these leopards what I'm probably going to do is think about stopping at some point and doing another leopard. Tingana peeled quite full bellied last night so because he did appear quite full bellied I'm hoping that he's going to be quite content not to move huge distances I guess that also leads to an important thing to discuss is that mating leopards will not have hunting as a high priority they will spend three to five days with mating as their main priority and even though I have seen mating leopards with a kill on one occasion, it's not common to doing that or, or getting lucky. Because, I mean, obviously, if something runs into them, which is, I guess, what happened on the one time, I did see them with a kill whilst mating. Unless that happens, they're happy to just focus on the task at hand, which is usually the male doing whatever he wants to do and the female following suit. scary business as females. I guess maybe they're hormones that are kind of higher than more due to the fact that they are in season maybe give them the confidence to come into another female's territory because females will compete quite aggressively with one another but what's interesting is that I've noticed that females might be more tolerant of other females if they are in their territory for mating purposes. Good morning and welcome on the Sunrise Safari. Uh, my name is Brent Yersmith. I have Andrew Joseph Francis on camera. And after much begging, I have got him the long cable and he's now able to sit on the tracker seat. So like a small child, he is very happy. He also gives you guys quite a different perspective. And we're taking you out on tracking team with us. So what we're doing on a tracking team is there are possibly mating leopards and we heard male lions roaring. So we're gonna go see if we can find those cats. So when we're not on the normal safari vehicles, uh, we'll head out in the early morning like this and uh, we're gonna try to give you a perspective of what it's like on a tracking team. So not for those who might not know, we are live. Uh, 
and also Andrew has managed to belt himself onto the seat so he can film and not fall off and uh, those might have noticed Scott said there was a seat belt on that front seat uh, that's normally 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 used uh, when chasing wild dogs but in this case it's used to make sure Andrew doesn't fall off and just a, remember, a reminder to everyone that times are going to be changing for the safaris and uh, from the 1st of February we'll be going out half an hour later in the mornings. Okay, so I know Scotty's checking from slightly further southwest of us and we're going to come from the eastern side. So quite a unique different perspective compared to what you guys are used to. So what we'll be doing from the tracking vehicle is going out on the vehicle looking for tracks and then we'll be getting off on foot and seeing if we can find those animals on foot. So really exciting, great to have you all along. Uh, don't forget if you've got any questions about tracking or lions or leopards or anything else we might encounter in this African wonderland that we operate in, uh, you can do that by using the hashtag Safari Live on Twitter and or pop us an email on questions at wildearth.tv. Also, uh, a very, very well done to two of our viewers uh, who took me up on the mating leopard challenge uh, last night on the Sunset Safari. And the challenge was to find, uh, to actually get, put your best video uh, of your mating leopard impersonation, which goes something like this. <laughs> And so Safari Dean and CC Art were the only two brave enough to accept the challenge. Come on, there's got to be more brave people out there. Video yourself doing the audio of mating leopards. Pop them on our Safari Live Facebook page or just pop them on Twitter with the hashtag Safari Live. So Michael Fleetwood, morning Mike, is wondering what's my favorite thing about sunrise safaris? Well Mike, I'm just showing you the road there. I think it's possibly the potential of fresh tracks and getting out on them early and you know they're not days old so there's always a stronger possibility of finding the animal that's making those tracks and also it's just quite nice and cool and the birds are quite stunning in the early morning, that dawn chorus. Uh, Pretty much everything about being out in the early morning uh, appeals to me. Uh, not to say that the Sunset Safari isn't fantastic as well, but they both have different sort of attributes. One of the most important things about a sunrise safari or the morning safari when you are, say, working, and, uh, working, it sets up your afternoon or your sunset safari. So quite often you've got the tracks, the lions have moved overnight, you track them, you find where they're, they're resting up for the day and that gives you an awesome place to start on the sunset safari. That's in theory of course, it doesn't always work like that, but uh, in a perfect world that's how it would work. Well, hold on Andrew, we've got a, a puddle coming up. We should be okay, but in case we're not, we might get a little bit of signal breakup as we go through this uh, little river system. A very warm safari live welcome to Heidi in North Hi. Carolina. Heidi, I'll be with you in a second. I'm just going to chat to Scotty, who's calling me, standing by. I think they've come west out of the Mulwazi at Mamba Road and then appear to head south on Trinance. 
Okay, copy. Uh, confirm you're going to check through to the boundary. Okay, so Scotty's got those tracks. It seems like, unfortunately, they might be heading towards our southern boundary, but he'll keep me updated. Uh, that's of the mating leopards. But So Heidi said she's just spotted two cheetah a few hours ago on the Incoral Cam, and she would like to know where do they rank uh, in compared to our lions and leopards. Heidi, I think you talking about sort of the, the, the predator hierarchy in the area. Uh, and she says they look huge on camera. So cheeses are very tall, much taller than a leopard, but far more slightly built. So in terms of rankings, lion is by far number one on top of the predator food chain. Now, if we had to take it on a one-on-one -on -one basis, so one lion versus one leopard or one leopard versus a hyena, and obviously it depends on male and female, certain big male leopards against one hyena will, will, will dominate them, but as soon as there's a second hyena, they move. So if you're actually honest, the predator hierarchy goes lion, hyena, leopard, and then cheetah at the bottom. Even though they look big, they're very tall, but they're very slightly built. So a big male cheetah uh, might weigh only about 60 kilograms, uh, whereas a big male leopard can weigh up to 90 kilograms. So there's a lot more weight and height and Oh, I forgot about wild dogs. Uh, wild dogs probably slip in just under the hyenas uh, in terms of the hierarchy. Uh, they will often chase leopard, uh, chase definitely chase cheetah, and th those animals will try to avoid them at all costs. But uh, while Scotty's on those tracks, I think maybe let's have a gander at heading north to see if the queen is still out and about near our northern boundary. So Scotty's covering the south, that's where the lions are calling and that's where the tracks of the mating pair were heading. So as a tracking team, now that we know we've got a vehicle in that area, we would move to another area to increase our chances of possibly finding something. So as I was saying Heidi, cheetah, even though they look quite tall, uh, they, they are quite slight and that's obviously special design for that incredible speed they're able to, 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 to reach. Now this is a very interesting animal. So che cheetah reached a genetic bottleneck about 10,000 years ago. So if the cheetah here are very closely related to the cheetah in the Masai Mara or the cheetah in Namibia. So they reckon they could, from genetics they can get it down to there were less than 100 cheetah left in Africa. And believe it or not, the human beings have actually helped increase cheetah numbers, uh, especially in areas like Namibia, uh, where a cheetah is not big enough to take down a domestic animal like a cow. Uh, so there are a lot of big cattle farms. So lion, leopard and hyena have been removed from these areas by the farmers, uh, but the cheetah have managed to sort of survive in there because they're not big stock killers. So it's more than likely in the next 10,000 to 20,000 years uh, that cheetah are going to be one of those failed uh, branches of the evolutionary tree and they'll probably go extinct all by themselves. So very very interesting but we'll chat a little bit more about that later and uh, we're gonna start heading north we might be going down a road that's got a bit of a, a signal issue so while we do that uh, let's go see what Scotty D's up to. Oh sorry about that he seems to have gremlins so you're stuck with us for a little bit longer. So we'll continue on that cheetah. Now a very interesting, very interesting little uh, anecdote. So you often see incredible pictures of cheetah in the Maasai Mara, in the Serengeti, uh, in the Makhadi Khadi Pans or Kalahari Desert. Now, uh, for those of you who don't know what a meta population, a meta population is a is a large uh, breeding population. And who can tell me where the largest meta population of cheetah in the whole of Africa is? And if you know that answer, or you'd like to take a gander, uh, send through uh, your answers on email to questions at wildearth.tv, or use the hashtag Safari Live on Twitter.
So as we peer around the corner, I hope Andrew, since he's sitting on the tracker seat, and all of you are sitting on the tracker seat with Andrew, I hope you're all looking for tracks as we move down this nice sandy road. So it seems like we actually have a, a, a gremlin in, in the satellite and tech machine. So unfortunately, we're going to have to disappear for a minute or two while we try to sort that out. We do apologize previously, but don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Andrew, you're going to have to turn off. I'm going to have to. <laughs> Wait. What's going on, buddy? <laughs> 